of them and you samples too. Damn. had this conversation already, then I wanted to thank you for the useful advice. But if I haven't seen you since our talk at that mysterious gravestone, which seems much more likely, then I could really use your help. Did I mention the dreams? Visions, really? They come and go without warning, like seeing through someone else's eyes. Quite disconcerting in an interesting sort of way. Anyway, my trusty shovel and I, we searched that entire grave, and it was gone. The Petraeus head, the dreams, the uh, visions, they drew me there, but someone got to it before I did. I have the strangest sensation in the pit of my tummy. It could be the cobweb porridge I had for breakfast, or something bad is about to happen. Well, that's sort of like leaping from the cliffs of failure without a rope, or at least without tying the end off first. I can't tell you how many times I've made that mistake. Oh, Abner wants to see you. He's in the town hall with the cat's general. At this point, we need to come up with a plan that takes into account Euraxians, Necromancers, and Dragons. I proposed a few options, but Goreshri wasn't sold on any of them. Tell me, what of Chimera and the source of the undead? You paint a troubling picture, my friend. Still, we need to celebrate every victory we achieve. I fear such triumphs will be few and far between. Do you have anything else to report? My half-sister likes to think that she's in charge. She won't take kindly to being called a puppet. As for leaving elsewhere, I think not. Obviously, this Mulam Nir fears us. Otherwise, the dragon wouldn't have deigned to talk to you. Every conversation I have with Cadwell makes my head throb, but one mystery at a time, if you please. Now, if only I could get my half-sister to listen to reason and see that the dragons are using her. A Pali? I may not like her, but we are family. Besides, it would give the Khajiit time to regroup. You're beginning to think like a Tharn, my friend. Here, take this. Garish Ri gave it to me, but I refuse to accept payment for my services. A Pali with Euraxia is a capital idea. I'll send word to Rimen to expect us. I imagine my half-sister will treat us as befits my station and agree to the meeting. Attend to any other matters if you must, then see me when you're ready to leave. It just so happens I already have one. It involves distracting my half-sister with wit, charm, and words she barely comprehends. Oh, and you. Euraxia never could resist a pretty face. You'll pretend to be my bodyguard and personal valet. Consider it obfuscation to hide your true purpose. We don't want to give Euraxia a reason to react poorly to overtures of reconciliation. Not that I expect to reach an accord, but still. Meet me in Rimen and we'll enter the palace together. Go on, go on. I'm capable of travelling to Rimen on my own. 
We'll meet up at the city gates and go to the palace from there. I'm relatively certain Euraxia will honor the parley, but be prepared for anything. She's still a Tharn, after all. We're not very close, in case I haven't made that abundantly clear. Euraxia is an accomplished mage in her own right. My younger sibling has always been ambitious, but I didn't realize the extent of her aspirations until the Frostfall coup. About six years ago or so, while Emperor Varen was busy with his rebellion, Euraxia took advantage of the confusion to lead a column of Nibbanese mercenaries into northern elsewhere. She declared herself Queen of Rimen and its adjacent fiefs. Of course not. The Khajiit call her the Usurper Queen, remember? Once Varen became Emperor, he had other problems to worry about. Same with Queen Irene. As long as the Alliance War occupies her forces, the Khajiit are on their own out here. This one hates the idea of talking to the Usurper Queen. We should be stabbing her in the neck. Still, Nalado sees the necessity, even if she doesn't like it. Euraxia will almost certainly betray you, so be careful when you face her, yes? By marching into elsewhere with a mercenary army and slaughtering our rightful Kajiti rulers, not only did the usurper slay our king and queen, she murdered the rest of the royal family. Her crimes, they swarm around her like flesh flies on dung. A parley with the usurper queen. I doubt she'll agree to any sort of diplomatic solution. But it will buy us time to replenish our resources. Very well. Take Tharn and meet with Euraxia. In the meantime, we will rebuild what remains of the militia. She marched into Anequina with a mercenary army and conquered Rimen. Her forces killed the royal family and she illegally proclaimed herself queen. That makes her a usurper. I pray I live to see her pay for her crimes. Greetings, Walker. Have you a moment to speak? Euraxia must be stopped at all cost. And trust this one, there will be cost. That is why Jaban look helps any way he can. No task is too small when there is so much to do. But when the battle comes, he will fight tooth and claw. A crowded marketplace, a chance meeting, unexpected, 
unannounced. And perhaps just the thing this one needs to solve a most curious investigation. Music Thunder Boots, at your service. An abduction, to be precise. No ransom, no demands, no obvious suspects or motives. Just a heartbroken father and a missing young lady. But that is why Mizik was hired, yes? <laughs> he steps in when all other justice fails. Correct. This one searches for Zinthia, daughter of Ishu. However, Mizik's inquiries have led to nothing but dead ends. And with a young lady's safety on the line, the sooner this investigation is solved, the better. A chance meeting turned fated partnership. Fortuitous for this one, yes? Uh, you should speak to Ishu first, see if he has any new information for us. His house is just south of the marketplace. Can't miss it. Music Thunderboots is a kajit of action. Well, he does not wish to merely boast of his prowess. This one aims to prove such skill. Just as soon as we have a little more to go on, of course. Uh, this one will confess, while Mizik is confident in his skills of investigation here, struggles with the more alarming situations his line of work often entails. Uh, such as when large people threaten him with very sharp daggers. Uh, not this investigation, thank the moons. Uh, well, not yet. That is where your expertise comes along, yes? Your bravery. This one's cunning, and a few good leads are all we need to solve this mystery. <laughs> it is a good name, no? <laughs> Mizik Thunderboots. When scoundrels hear the footsteps of his boots, <laughs> they will quake in fear. Oh, well, perhaps you are right. <laughs> Not very subtle, is it? He is a humble Khajiit of moderate wealth. Seems to keep to himself. No enemies, no debts. No reason why he would be targeted. Yet just a few days ago, his daughter, Zinthia, was taken in the dead of night. Most well, strange, no? If Mizik did not know better, he would say that it was an intimidation tactic. Perhaps even an act of revenge against Ishu. But who would wish this cruelty against such a kind Khajiit? They outright dismissed Ishu's claim, believing that the young lady has merely run away. A most vexing call, truth be told. From all that Ishu has told this one, Zinthia is a most sweet Jakajit, not one to make her father worry. Are you here about this one, Zinthia? Has she been found? Yes, of course. Zinthia was taken in the dead of night. This one has received no ransom, yet he fears the worst. She is a very beautiful Jakajit, you see. Ishu believes that the captors may mean to sell her. Zinthia has a long, glossy coat, soft as the richest of silks. Her eyes are bright yellow, like the honeyed moons. Ah, oh, and she always wears a gold necklace. No suspects, no, but someone who may have spotted something? Hmm. There is a wood elf who tends to stay up well into the night, always singing and dancing that one. If anyone saw something unusual the night Zinthia was taken, it might be her. The wood elf's name is Mel? Yes, that's it. Mel the Musical, she always calls herself. You can usually find her toward the north end of town, near the sand gardens. Ishu will pray for your swift success. To help find this one's darling, Zinthia, Ishu will answer any question you ask. Mel arrived in Riverhold a few seasons ago. 
makes a living begging for gold as she sings and dances. She has woken up issue more than once banging that drum of hers. Still, we chat occasionally. She is kind, if not a bit eccentric. Mel does not have a home in the traditional sense, so you will often find her sleeping in the stables and bathing in the public fountains. But who is issue to judge, eh? We all have our oddities. Zinthia is a willful child. A tad spoiled, this one admits. Issue dotes on her. The town guard. They do not understand. They say, oh, perhaps she has wandered off. They say, perhaps she is lost. Such foolishness. How can they be so uncaring? Thank you. Thank you. May bright moons light your path. Ishu will prepare a feast for Zinthia's return, yes? Perhaps some fish. Ah, yes. Fish is her favorite. This one can already hear her contented purrs. Salutations, Mel the Musical at your service. Are you here for a performance? Issue, the Khajiit with all the cats? That old coot is sweet as honey jaga, but a bit off if you ask me. Shame about his daughter though. No one should have to go through that. If you're looking for trouble, Tajiri's your girl. I've seen her with all sorts of indecent folk lately. Always shifty eyes on those ones, I tell you. She tends to spend a lot of time behind the stables lately, if you catch my drift. Very good, then. And hey, if you're looking for some entertainment for your next soiree, make sure to seek me out. You won't regret it. She's a gambler with a lot of friends in a lot of places. And you know, who am I to judge? Business is business, after all. But as of late, she just seems to be getting more and more suspicious. In fact, there's been a lot of that in Riverhold. Suspicious activity. People who I ain't ever seen before, going about town at all hours. I mean, I may stay up well past most people's bedtime, but I'm a musician, comes with the territory. And these new folks aren't bards, that's for sure. Inuma once lived in Starhaven, a beautiful adeptorium with many wonderful adepts. But a dragon came and attacked our home, leaving much to rebuild and no comfort to be found. There was nothing left for this one in Starhaven. His quarters were destroyed along with all of his possessions. Inuma has nothing to his name but his faith. Still. He could have stayed to help rebuild, that is true. Too many sad memories. This one could not bear to stay, not after so much of his home was destroyed and so many of his friends were lost. Still, he will do what he can to help those in Riverhold.
Saw you heading this way. Find anything of interest. Oh, the stables, hmm? Developed a sudden interest in horsemanship, Walker? Oh, looks to be a coat. A napping badger, eh? Sounds familiar. Ah, <laughs> yes. The sleeping badger is a rock formation, just south of Riverholt. But this bit about the sweet trip, that music doesn't understand. Music will mark it on your map, Walker. Feel free to lead the way. And perhaps this is a good time to mention that this one is not so skilled in uh, violent situations, uh, should trouble find us. But that is where your expertise comes in handy, yes? must belong to Zintia. Skuma. These vagrants must be smugglers. Come, let us speak away from this place. Missing daughter, a hidden note, and now a band of skooma smugglers. This investigation becomes messier with every step we take. This one is unsure, though it is possible Ishu may be hiding something. Still, our priority should be to investigate the gambler who wrote that note. Tajiri was her name, yes? That does ring a bell or two. If Tajiri is a gambler, it is likely we can find her at a local tavern. Mizik will head there at once and see what he can dig up. Meet this one at the Banished Regrets Inn.
dancing through the night on feet. Now, light feet we glide. Hey, hey, I must admit, you and Thunderboots make quite the charming pair. And watching you both play at being investigator, why it's been sleek entertainment, truly. But now, now you tread upon sand that are best left undisturbed. Take it as a friendly warning. I hear that you seek Ishu's daughter, yes? I find that very funny. After all, everyone in Riverhold knows that she left town many years ago. Then Ishu has become senile in his old age. I speak truthfully. He had one daughter and she is gone. Has been gone for many years. Tell this to your partner and drop your investigation now. Hey, hey, Bandari girl, our caravan in tow. Isahel thought about joining the Order of the Zankash when he was a younger Kashit. But all those rules the adepts must follow? Who has the patience for that? Bandari, our kingdom on our back. Walker, we can teach the steps will be your guiding star. Hey, hey, Bandari boy, keep close to the car. Hey, hey, Bandari girl, our vagabond You look as good as moon sugar. Careful, or Tajiri might lick you. Bright moons look over us today, Walker. Tajiri has just settled down for a round of gambling. While music distracts her, you can sneak into her home and search for another clue. It's just a bit north of the tavern. Hmm. Forgive this one if he's skeptical. Even if this stranger spoke truly, why then would issue higher music? Why would Tajiri have written that note? Why would we find a gold necklace in the smuggler's camp? Then perhaps this stranger simply wishes to confuse us. Throw us off the scent. <laughs> Besides, we cannot stop now. Not when an innocent young lady may still be at risk. Let us investigate Tajiri before she retires for the night. Why, hello, sweet meat. Care to play a game with old Tajiri? <laughs> of course. <laughs> Though this one will admit he is not very skillful.
groceries for the house. There's barely anything to eat. And would it kill you to tidy up our room once in a while? The upstairs is a mess. This one hopes you have found something of interest, Walker. Mizik cannot afford to keep Tajiri distracted any longer. And he means that most literally. Blue serpents? Four-pointed paint? If Mizik had to guess, this poem describes drop-off locations for illicit goods. Smugglers often hide them in plain sight. First a sleeping badger, now a blue serpent. Must represent another landmark. That's it. The river is often busy with trade. A perfect place to smuggle goods. Let us search along the river and see if we find any barrels or crates with markings. Hopefully we'll find something that will lead us to Zinthia. Misik will admit this case is heading in a rather uh, unexpected direction. Which is a bit worrisome if he's being honest. <laughs> It is strange, isn't it? With an operation as intricate as this, it seems odd that these smugglers would target a Khajiit of such limited wealth. This one agrees, but let us first check these smuggler cachets. The note said that the goods were leaving town today, yes? That could include Zinthia. One is fine.
Mizik sees a painted mark ahead. A very pretty scarf for smugglers to wear, yes? Perhaps it belongs to Zinthia. That mark has four points, like the note says. This barrel smells sweet, but also rotten. What could it be? Dark moons. They're smuggling spoiled moon sugar. Very unsafe for anyone to eat. Speak to Ishu and see what he knows of his smugglers. Then let us meet back at the tavern. We have much to discuss. Yes, any news of this one, Zindia? Smuggler camps? Dark moons? Yes, the necklace and scarf belong to Zindia. Have they... Have the smugglers sold her? By John and Joe, please say it isn't so. No, of course not. Ishu has only lived a good, honest life. Please, you must find this one's Jakajit. She is so young and innocent and probably terrified without her papa. Whatever will Ishu do if his Cynthia is harmed? May bright moons watch over you. Oh, really? Well, Ishu supposes his family has grown over the years. But how could this one not seek their companionship? Their little faces, their tiny paws. His darlings love him completely, demanding little but affection and food and belly rubs. But of course, mostly. She and Medwick don't always get along, but Medwick is older and doesn't always like to play or be teased. And just between us, Tak Tak can be a bit of a jacuzzi sometimes. I think she's jealous. <laughs> <laughs> 